So let's get started. Are you guys excited? How's your Wednesday going? All right, so let's get started. So you say you have a niche, but it's something like group travel. And unfortunately, you are still not getting clients with the niche that you believe that you have. You tell yourself and you tell others, I don't need a niche because I enjoy booking everything and I don't want to miss out on anything, right? You are, you know that you should have a niche, but you have no idea how to get a niche. I have people tell me all the time, I don't know how to get a niche. And, and we're going to talk about, do you really get one? Do you find one? Or do you determine it? Like, what does it mean? For getting a niche so all right i had somebody before i go on i had somebody post in the group and i told her that i was going to do a um a q a session all around her question and unfortunately she didn't get a lot of responses and i i, I wonder maybe people didn't see it or maybe they didn't know what to reply but her question was pretty simple it was what kind of travel niches do people have and it was by lisa um i can't I, Clem, clemens i think is her last name but she's in our group and she posted that several weeks ago and she said yeah you know what are people's niches and nobody replied so i thought you know what i'm going to do an entire training just around that um and so Rhonda says that her niche is family and family groups right um you know people tell me all the time that their niche is uh group travel right they know that group travel you can make some money and so they decided they went and found themselves a niche and they said group travel is it, right? But I'm gonna to talk to you today around why you may need to go a little bit deeper. So, um, but what I will tell you is if you are answering me and you know, this is not, I always do these sort of questions at the beginning, not to try and make you feel bad, but really just to give you a little bit more insight relative to either launching or operating your business. And one of the insights that it tells me is that there's something about your business model that probably has you running in circles, right? Because you don't have a niche, you have a niche or you think you have a niche and it's very broad, right? And you still are not getting that goal that you want, which is to get more clients, right? To attract more of your ideal clients, right? So. Um, we are actually working on niche right now and narrowing that down inside of travel passions to profits. But listen, I don't want you to get me wrong. I don't want you to think that, you know, you can't make sales because you've got this broad niche or you've got this, uh, you know, some area of the travel business locked down. You can probably make some sales. I don't want to get you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say you'll never make a sale. You'll make some sales. Right. But here's the thing. It's not efficient, right? You're not going to efficiently and consistently make sales if you're broad, right? If you're not focused on that particular part of the industry, whatever that may be. But we're going to talk about that in just a little bit, right? So again, I'm not saying that you can't make money being broad and being, you know, general. You can, right? I'm just saying it's not efficient and nor can you do it consistently. Right. And, you know, you can come in my inbox and you can tell me, well, no, I'm making sales. I'm consistently making sales. Right. But then I would argue it's not efficient. Right. And I'm going to tell you why it's not efficient. So today, what we are going to talk about is how you can take my three recipe list items for creating and determining a niche for your travel business. OK, but before we get started, I want to talk about why do you even need a niche right some of you will say i don't need a niche there is only one reason to pick a niche and the key word i want you guys to write this is focus that's it focus the only reason to get a niche and be very specific about your niche is focus and so what do i mean by that money loves specificity i always have a hard time saying that word but money loves specificity right? The more specific that you can be, the more that you can determine who your suppliers are. The more you can determine who your clients are. The more you can determine um, what your business is and what it is and the boundaries that you are going to operate in, right? So the more specific that you can be in your travel business, the more focused that you can do everything, the more you can focus your dollars, the more you can focus your training, the more you can focus on what to say to your clients, right? A niche 
equals focus. I'd like, I'd like you guys to write that focus. That is the only reason to get a niche, right? Because that focus will get you more money, right? That focus will get you specific training. That focus will allow you to win awards. That focus will allow you to, you know, become the top seller in the, you know, for that supplier because you're only working with that supplier, right? As opposed to working with multiple 15 different suppliers and you're all over the place, right? Focus. That is the reason why you get a travel niche is so that you can be focused in all of the things that are your travel business. Does that make sense, everybody, what I'm talking about? That you can get the focus if you have a specific area of what it is that you are uh, doing in your business. But still, I have people who will tell me that they have a niche and it's still not very specific, right? So let's talk about the three items in my recipe that we're going to do about, you know, determining your niche. I don't kind of feel like you get a niche. I feel like you determine it, right? And it's going to be based on these recipe items. All right. So the number one, the number one recipe that you need in determining your niche for your travel is you, right? And what do I mean by that? I mean, what do you like? What are you interested in? What do you want to focus on? What do you, what are you good at? What do you like to do? What are your interests? Everything around your niche shouldn't be around anybody but you and what you like, right? What do you like to do? What are you what are you interested in? What is something that you've done before, right? What are you uh, passionate about? That's what your niche should be around. It shouldn't be around something that you think will make you money and you don't really have a passion for it because what's going to happen is, is when you talk about it, it's going to resonate that that's not your passion, right? Group travel, right? I mean, so, and I, I'm picking on poor group travel, right? Because that's what I'm, I'm probably like 80% of the people that I talk to tell me when I ask them if they have a niche, they tell me that they're going to do family travel or group travel. Those are like the two top number one niches that people tell me, right? But that doesn't really tell me anything, right? Does it tell you anything? Does it tell you? I mean, group travel is just the type of travel. It just means that you've got many people versus less people, right? That doesn't tell you what your passion is. It doesn't tell you what you're interested in, right? That doesn't tell you anything, right? So number one recipe for a good niche is to determine what the interests are around that thing that you want to do, right? Single moms and single dads, right? That's interest, right? Those are parents that are raising their children by themselves. That's an interest point, right? You know, destination weddings, that's an interest point, right? So there's a group component to that. There's a fit component to that, but it's really specific, right? So the recipe number one item that you need to include in the determination of your niche is you. What are you interested in? What do you want to learn about, right? Even if you may have not ever done it, what is it something that you want to learn about or know about in terms of that area, right? Um, I had... Uh, a, um, a like a, a list of 50 items that were good niche areas, right? And some of the things that are really popular right now in the last several years is like wellness travel, right? And people, I don't, I don't hear a lot of travel, at least in the people that, then I don't hear a lot of people talk to me about wellness travel, but it really is an up and coming niche area, right? Because, you know, particularly this generation of people, right, are interested in their health. They're interested in staying fit both internally and externally, right? So uh, the industry is really taking notice of that. I even saw this year that there was um, a ship, a cruise ship, I can't remember what line it is, but a cruise ship that is going to be all wellness focused, right? Vegan food, be, I mean, I can't even remember the name of the ship or what cruise line it was, and this is pre-COVID, right? But the whole idea is, is that's an interest area that people care about, right? And that people, you know, I'm not necessarily vegan, but that that's interest of interest to people, right? So you is the number one component in determining your niche, your interest, your thing, the thing that you're passionate about. And if you don't know your passions, what do you want to become passionate about, right? Or what is it that you want to know about, right? That's something um, that you can consider. So you is the number one component in the recipe for a niche. The number two component, right, is need. What do people need? Right. And it's not travel, general travel. It's something specific about travel. 
that they need or specific about like wellness, right? People want to feel better. They want to feel healthier, right? They want to take time for mind, body, and spirit, right? And travel certainly is a means by which you put a, a trip or a focal point in that area that's around that space and that need creates, you know, there are people who are looking for that specific type of experience. So the number two recipe item for a niche is the need. What is the need that you will be fulfilling, need or desire that you will be fulfilling with this particular niche, right? Destination wedding, what is the need there, right? It's people who wanna get married, but in an untraditional way, right? That's the need, right? Single parents group, right? What's the need there? Either to travel economically or even though they are just one, be able to have their children experience what normally people of two incomes can do, right? That's the need, right? What is the need that your niche is going to fit fulfill, right? So that's number two. That sometimes is hard for travel agents to wrap their head around because they think of themselves as travel um, fulfillers, right? The travel, let me rephrase that, travel order takers. And that's not what you are. I don't want you to think of yourself as an order taker. You're not an order taker. Expedia, these online booking engines, they take orders, right? You put in your requirements, boom, they spit out a result. That is not what we do right? That is not what you travel professionals do is take orders and fulfill them based on that. You create experiences, you fulfill need, right? You fulfill desire, right? And if you don't know what that need or desire is, then you need to step back and you need to focus on that. What is the need or the desire that I'm fulfilling in the niche that I am determining for my business? If you don't know that, that is what I want you to focus on is you, what do you like, what are you passionate about? And two, what are you fulfilling and what is the what is the hole that you are filling with your travel business? All right, so let's go to number three. Let me know if you guys are ready for number three. It's them. So what I mean by them, it's your clients, right? Is who will you be servicing, right? So you know what you like, right? You know what need you will fulfill and who is the person that you want to work with, right? What is that person? What are the characteristics about those people? What do they look like? What do they feel like? You know, what are they feeling? What are they thinking about? Who is the person, right? You need to know who the them is that you're going to be working with. You need to know who that is, right? So I have some people who tell me it's families. Well, what kind of families? Is it single families? Is it, you know, two parent families? Is it single parents? Is it, you know, people who are empty nesters? Is it retired parents? Right. Who do you want to work with? Don't tell me everybody. Right. Because what does money love? Money loves specificity. <laughs> I really have to practice saying that word. But money loves specificity. Right. So the more specific that you can get, the more money you can get yourself. Right. So, again, who is your client? Simple as that. Right. You know what you like. You know what you want. You determine that there is a need and people need need it or want it, right? And then you know who it is that you're going to work with, right? If you've got those three things, right, around your niche, you have the recipe for a good niche that will allow you to do what? Focus, right? Focus on getting your suppliers, focus on getting training around those suppliers, a, a select few suppliers. It'll allow you to focus around your business vision. It will allow you to focus around everything that is your travel business. Three things, simple. This is not going to be a long session today, right? Because I had three little hot topics. So I'm going to just say this before I open it up for Q&A, is many of you think that you have a niche, but it doesn't have those three recipe components. And if it doesn't, you're going to continue to struggle with speaking and connecting to your prospective client when you do your marketing. You're going to have trouble with really understanding who your client is so that when you do when you do meet with them and you do do discovery calls with them and you do talk to them right being able to connect to them and provide them solutions in the unique way that you need to right if you don't have that recipe if you don't have passion for what you do right you're just going to go through the the if you're going to go through the motion and uh, you know prospective customers can smell right your lack of your fear they can smell your lack of uh, passion for what it is that you do. 
because you know most of you are probably good salespeople and can't keep all that in right right so if you're not passionate about your doing you're not lit up and you're not excited right about the thing it is that you're doing right you're probably giving off that vibe right so it's critical passion need and then right who's your client what is it what is their problem or solution or thing that they want and what is it that you love to do those are the three recipes for success right three recipes for a great niche so i'm going to open it up and i know there's a little bit of a lag so just what i want to know is do you have a niche now that you've got do you feel like your niche meets those three criteria so i just gave you the recipe right you like too many things write them all down that you like what are all the things that you like and then um, identify what are the needs that you potentially can fulfill in those areas, right? So again, all three recipes, if you can like a lot of things, but maybe not everybody has a need for them or is um, wants it or wants to have it, or maybe they do, right? And then you just prioritize those things that you want to work on first, but make a commitment 12, 18 months that if you are going to do, you know, fill in the blank, you're going to commit to learning about that over the next 12 to 18 months because that is all that you should be speaking about, right? Is that something you're passionate about? All inclusive. What about that? What is the need or solution that it's fulfilling? And who is your client, right? Those are the three recipe items. So right now in Travel Passions to Profits, the program that we're running right now, you know, this is the first thing we work on in that program is we work on the identification of your niche and your micro niche, right? Who is the person that you want to work with every single day in your travel business, right? Who's your ideal client, that dream client? What are their characteristics and what is the need that you're going to be fulfilling for them, right? So um, the recipe is clear, right? And the reason I wrote the recipe that way is because if you have those three components defined, I'm telling you, you got it golden. You know who you're talking to, you know what the need or what the want is, and you know what your passion is, right? Or the, the thing or the interest area for you. And if you can't fill those three items, in your, if the, your niche can't pass that three item smell test, then you need to do some more work, all right? I have a one of our um, students inside of Travel Passions to Profits, she is doing uh, single parents travel, right? So she, her focus is on single parents um that travel and she's got an entire group focused on that and that's what she's doing so there's definitely a need in that and when we were talking about her niche one of the things that she that we both agreed was is single dads usually don't get called out right so calling out single dads i think is a really good idea um i've got another member michael and he was talking about doing his niche on uh father and son getaways right um, and there's a, you know, a huge, I just think men in general are, are, um, are highly intact, right? Because usually it's women who do the planning if, if it's a couple or are or, or the planners in the situation. Um, but men are, are traveling and they are traveling with kids. They are single parent, uh, single parent dads. Um, and so I do think as travel professionals, you know, focusing on, on the man's space, <laughs> if that's your thing or interest, is a great area to do. Because I do think that, I mean, I don't see a lot of it. Maybe you do, but I haven't seen a lot of focus on the man's space. So, um, you know, the more we can focus, the more you can find an area that is not necessarily undiscovered, because I don't want you to be the first of anything. But the more that you can focus or find an area or a body of people, an audience of people, that are not usually called out or addressed, uh, th that's very specific, right? Again, money loves specificity. And so the more you can do that, the more successful that you will be. Because think, if I'm talking to a dad who has girls, right? How do you make your, you know, you as a dad, how are you connecting with your girls, right? It may be difficult for a man to think about them as a single parent doing that and still traveling, right? How do they, you know, create amazing experiences for their girl children, their boy children? It doesn't matter. But, you know, I could talk specifically to that dad, right? And their concerns are probably different or not even the same as what we as women would think of, right? So again, the more specific that you can get with your client's choice, the better off you're going to be. All right. You know, I, I did welcome the newbies. And so let me do that now. If you are new to this channel and this is your first time 
joining me live. I am just super excited that you are here. Thank you for joining me live. I come here every Wednesday night to talk to you about a topic on launching, marketing, or operating your travel business. So this is for future existing and new travel professionals who have decided to make that jump. So I'm glad that you were here. So I love StreamYard, which is how I stream live to you guys. But the problem is, is if you guys haven't registered your name, I am not able to see who's talking. So I like to always address the person who's speaking. And you know what? This is the deal. This is the time, right? We are in um, an unprecedented time in the travel industry right now, right? Um, things are, you know, people are, and I, I dare not say people are not traveling because people are traveling. Right. So people are traveling. Right. But it's still pretty scary for a lot of us who are not traveling. Right. So as a travel professional, I will not bash you if you decide to book during this time. If you know, get your coins, however you feel, just as long as you've got the, you know, you've got insurance and you've got strong terms and condition. Right. Uh, you know, if you're booking travel during this time, I say go for it. Right. As long as you've got yourself covered from a risk perspective. In your business now for those who are not uh booking travel right now because you are waiting to see you know from a health perspective that things settle down and you're not booking now this time no matter what year is the time to be preparing for the flood that will eventually come so for those of you who are preparing now right so this is sort of the time if you ever remember that that story as a kid you know the 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 hen that you know, she got the rice, she got the wheat, she got all the materials and all her friends were sitting around and she's baking bread and nobody wanted to help her bake the bread, right? And then when she made the bread, everybody came around because that's the way it's going to be in the travel industry, right? I don't want to hear you talking to me, you know, six months, eight months, 12 months from now and be like, I'm not making clients and you've been in this group for 12 months, right? I don't want to hear you a year from now saying you're in the same space that you are today because you didn't take action. The action now is that you don't have a niche. I just, I mean, every week I'm coming in here giving you tidbits and things that you can be working on in your travel business. If you don't have a niche that's narrow and specific, right? So you can, that money, that uh, that love specificity is attracted to you because you are specific and you're not specific. I, you know, I say shame on you, right? You should be doing the work now so that you can handle all of the work that's going to be coming your way. Those travel businesses that are working on the foundation of their business, they're attracting clients now, they're attracting leads into their business now, they're nurturing that relationship. When COVID's not an issue, right? Passports start to release and people can start to travel, right? And, and things get back to the way they were. I don't think they ever will get back to the way they were. But at least travel will be open, right? And if travel is open, that means that you are busy, right? And so it's not just COVID is the reason why you don't have business, right? I don't want you to be mistaken by that. I don't know everybody's personal story, but 90% of the people who don't have an attraction system, the reason why you don't have business is not because of COVID and people aren't traveling, it's because you don't have systems in place. You don't have a marketing strategy. You don't have a niche. You're all over the place in your business. You don't have focus, right? Those are the reasons why. And you can work on that now. That's COVID independent, right? You can work on your business, make it stronger now. So when the floodgates open, you're ready, right? That's what I want. I want to have a bunch of prepared, ready people who are taking stuff, taking bookings when when the bookings start to happen, right? I'm here to tell you the travel industry is not dead. The travel industry has a hiccup. I think that the cruise lines have a lot of work to do to gain our trust again when it comes to health. I think they did a poor job in the response to COVID, right? So if you um, specialize in cruising like I did, um, you know, I would recommend that you potentially look at maybe all inclusives or something until the cruise line, uh, it, the cruise industry proves themselves because I think they do have a lot of proving. I think that they, did just a horrible job in the response to COVID. Um, you know, I that's just the reality. I don't think they did a good job. Um, but from a supplier perspective, you know, again, this is why you need to understand what your niche is, right? So if you know that your thing is cruising, right, are you just relying solely on cruising um, as your type of travel going forward, right? Do you, um, do you have a backup plan in the event that cruising doesn't open up as quickly as the resorts are? 
right? Because resorts are opening up and people um, are going and they're traveling and they're documenting their experiences and talking about how well things are on the resort and how safe they feel in the resort, right? So I feel like resorts are going to open up sooner than cruising will open up just because I think the cruising industry has a huge uh, hill in terms of trust to overcome. But, you know, what are you doing if your specialty of cruise uh, travel type was cruises? Do you have a backup plan? What are you doing in that space now, right? So what is my opinion on domestic travel for niche? I think that the United States has an amazing air, uh, amount of places to visit. And I think that, um, you know, me as an American, I, you know, I, I see people post, like, how many states have you been to? And I've been to a lot of states, but I haven't been to all of them. And I haven't seen all of the amazing places that are in America. And there is cruising in America. There is a cruise line. Um, if you don't know, like, the whole uh, background on cruises, most of the cruise industries, uh, cruises headquarters are not American. There is one cruise line that is American-based that does river cruises in the United States. It does the Mississippi and um um, I don't know what other what other river that they do, but they have smaller ships, um, and I think that's a great idea. I think domestic travel um, is a great area to explore. There's actually a traveler, a travel supply company that I met at last year's uh, DFW travel convention, and that's all they specialize in. But that supplier, that is all they focus on is U.S. travel. Um, and I thought that was amazing um, that it's destinations in the United States that are, you know, just beautiful. There are there are really a lot of amazing uh, locations and destinations in the United States. And I think as travel professionals, it's our it's our duty <laughs> to provide those options. Right. Particularly since international options are not um, as uh is not available as they used to be, right? Europe doesn't even want us to come in their countries. Um, so again, I think I think we, if you want to be successful, you need to be adaptable. That is period, end of story. And that's COVID, or COVID aside. Your ability to adapt to what is going on currently in whatever situation that you have will be the difference between you being successful and you falling flat on your face. Right. So the more that you can adapt to whatever changes in your environment occur, the more chameleon that you can adopt, the more that you can adopt and change based on circumstances, the better your business can be. So to La Larissa's point, Larissa specializes in St. Lucia. She is the St. Lucia chick, right? She when last year. You know, on her page, that's all like I you would not, you'd like be daft if you didn't know that Larissa was St. Lucia, right? That is her stick, that is her thing, right? So that may not be everyone's comfort level right now. So domestic, I think domestically is definitely the way to go now, right? Because people can drive and you can still get those reservations on the resort side. Again, you need to be adaptable, right? You need to be fluid and you need to be able to move. In that environment, just because you've always been in the Caribbean doesn't mean that you can't. American Cruise Line, that is it. That is the name of the American Cruise Line. And, you know, those dudes aren't saying nothing. You didn't hear nothing about COVID. Not to say they didn't have COVID. You just, they were not in the news like the big ocean liners were. Um, but they only do the United States. They do the East Coast. I don't know if they do the West Coast, but I know for sure that they're up and down the East Coast. And I do know that they do the Mississippi. Um, and track vacation, somebody posted a great idea, right? Because um, your cart's separate, right? You got your own separate cart. I know that you got a, a, a common dining area. But again, be creative in your travel options. And you can still specialize in that, right? If you do wine tours and that's your thing, right? California is the place. But hell, the, the reality is, I mean, I'm in Texas and Texas has got vineyards, right? One of the things that I um, meant to say last week that I forgot to say is, is that, you know, when you're thinking about locations to travel, don't forget about your hometown, right? Your hometown has probably got some amazing places to go and people can come to your hometown and travel. Again, you know, Florida, Texas, my, my, my country. I'm talking once COVID settles down and people feel comfortable or, uh, around traveling at the high volume that we were traveling before. Think locally, right? What local events, what local um, uh, scenery and local area attractions do you have that you can create 
packages or interests around as well. So don't always think international, think locally, think domestically, right? And then you can also think internationally. All right, ladies and gentlemen, because I cannot just say ladies anymore because we have some gentlemen in the group now. So I will not just say ladies anymore. So ladies and gents, if you don't have any more questions, that's all I got for you today. Um, so how many of you people out there are ready to dive into getting your niche all worked up because what i would love to see over the next couple of days is you guys getting some niches that are really defined right really clear about that right so that's good so just tell me yes if you're ready to get your niche or you have your niche and you're ready to you're ready to take it to the next level let me know yes for those who are new to me, again, I thank you. For those who are old to me, I thank you for joining me this Wednesday night. I will be here next Wednesday night, as I am every Wednesday night, and I will be talking about a topic relative to launching, marketing, or operating your travel business so that you guys can be successful travel business owners and entrepreneurs. With that, have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.